Hi, and welcome to another episode of Comics with Kids. Um, I'm starting a new series of episodes for the channel that I really wanted to do some breakdowns. I haven't really done much of that uh, on a larger kind of scale. We've done sort of individual issues, and, and, and Kate's broken down some stuff that she really loved, but... I've been reading through some books that are outside my my norm and my comfort zone, and I've been kind of enjoying that, and I wanted to sh sort of share what I've learned in case you're in the same boat. I know we've got a lot of Marvel fans that uh, are on following my channel and that I have made connections with, so I thought, why not share some of the knowledge I've gained as I've expanded my knowledge of the DC universe a little bit. I love Batman. I have a lot of knowledge in, in the areas of Batman and, and in some of the big event stories, but not necessarily in some of the smaller characters. And thanks to the help of uh, Fire Guy Ryan from the Geek Street 101 podcast crew and uh, and from his own Instagram, uh, Instagram and YouTube channels, he's been getting me into uh, Green Lantern. And he has a big passion for this character and specifically for the Jeff Johns storylines that, uh, that he, he created the recreated the character, I should say, or re maybe perfected the character. Um, these, uh, are not terribly old. These are fairly recent stories. Um, and he, he gave me a bit of a roadmap to let me know kind of where the story is going to go and, and which, trades I should read in kind of which order. I did it out of order from what it should have been done so that I could follow closely kind of what Ryan was saying. And I'll, I'll give you kind of my breakdown. I started with this one I just showed you. It's called Secret Origin. Chronologically, if you went issue by issue of his run, Jeff Johns, this would come much later. I started with it because it is an origin story and it basically gives you Jeff Johns' version of how Hal Jordan got the ring and, and how those first few times using the ring might have gone. And he obviously bases it on what's already canon and then just kind of builds on it and gives it a slightly different personality. It's a perfect beginning spot. Now, I'm sure they did it to coincide with the, the movie Ryan Reynolds did, which I hear isn't really good. I never saw it because it's also that origin story idea, right? And so they kind of built a lot of that into this as well. So it's the artwork is really really good. The 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 storyline is really well put together. The the art pops off the page and Jeff Johns really does know how to like write something that builds and escalates and the the storyline really uh, uh, really picks up speed. So I really enjoyed this. It's a it's a great one to dive in if you're not familiar with the character like me or if you have just a limited knowledge base. It's a great entry point. And it segues into what I read next, which was Rebirth, which which Ryan said I should read, but that I you know it wasn't like a, a high point. And I will say, from Secret Origins, which I really really liked, to Rebirth, which I really did not. Um, it's it's peaks and valleys in that way, but I understood why it was happening with this one. And, and let me give you my perspective, which was Jeff Johns comes on to Green Lantern, which has so many backstories and so many plots and all these things. In fact, when he came online onto the storyline, Hal was dead. The character had been killed. So clearly he had to reinvent the wheel and, 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 and cut a lot of old storylines out and, and, and frame the story he wanted to tell. So that's what Rebirth was. It was the chance for him to sort of cut anything he didn't want, shape what he had left, and then set up the pieces to tell the stories that he wanted to as he continued his run, knowing that he would hopefully have a lot of time. And he, of course he did. Um, so reading Rebirth, do I recommend it as well as Secret Origin? Probably not, but obviously there's a lot of backstory here that will play out in future issues. So that's the sticking point. I, I, I think it's necessary just know that it's going to be the tougher one to get through. Of the of the five I've trades I've read, that was the worst. If Secret Origin was one of the best, that was one of the is is the worst of the five I've read. Which brings me to I think still my favorite of the five. Better than Secret Origin for me is 
no fear. And of course it has this incredible Alex Ross cover. I mean, that is just, I've got to actually seek this out, see if I can find just a copy of that cover, even if it's just like a $3 book. That is a sick cover. I mean, absolutely. This is the character Jeff Johns was made, or sorry, uh, Alex Ross was made to draw. I mean, what an iconic drawing of an iconic character. Now, why do I like this one? I think it finally is the story that Jeff Johns could, he wanted to tell. You get to have all the human backstory stuff. So you have Hal and his brother and, and, and Coast City, which is the, the, the place that he guards in the same way that Batman would have Gotham or Superman would have Metropolis. So we have him returning to Coast City, which was destroyed preceding Jeff Johns' run and is now being rebuilt and there's very few people. And so he he's trying to help encourage the city to be what it once was and knowing that he bears some of the guilt for what happened. So it, for me, it was, it was all the human elements that make the character interesting. And of course, family plays a huge part. Uh, the death of his father and the way it affected his brother like it, it, they don't rush through that stuff. Um, it's an it's an incredibly violent storyline. Um, you know the 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 characters that come. So in, they're called sorry man hunters, um, and they're the the sort of synthetic uh, protectors who are viewing the Green Lanterns as competition, and so obviously that's a that's a significant storyline here. But more than that, it was all sort of that idea of uh, of predecessors and the, the those that choose to follow or in, in some cases fathers and sons and I thought the the the, the, the metaphors and the storylines played out really really well the action was really really spectacular the drawings really really well done um, I, I it was just it was just creative and it pushed what I understood about Green Lantern to a new place I really just can't recommend this one enough and it kind of you kind of need all three, which is a shame, and it gets a little gross with the, I don't, I mean, uh, the the creepy like bad guy. I don't, I don't freak anybody out too much, but like, uh, it gets into some of that character. Doctor Hammond, I think, is his name, and he, he's he's definitely a out there villain, and I know that that was one of the, I think that was the character that they used in the Green Lantern movie to some poor success. Um, it builds really well, and again, the way they sort of intersperse flashback with the the main story, I, I found that to be really potent. And obviously, I'm a I'm a big Lost fan, so mixing flashback with the uh, the present day story is going to appeal to me in that way. But I think it was just an effective tool, more than just a origin story or just a present story. It was a way to kind of blend a little bit of that together. So I really, really enjoy that. That would be my favorite of the five. Which brings us to Revenge of the Green Lanterns, the fourth one in the series. This one is more of a classic outer space story. You get the main story centering around Hal dealing with the chaos he caused before he died. So again, a little bit of that, the stuff before the Jeff Johns run. He, he was involved in the destruction of Coast City. He was involved in the destruction of the, some of the Green Lanterns and all these things. And so that all sort of comes back to haunt him in some big ways. Um, you also get some of the other Green Lanterns. I don't know much about Guy Gardner, but he plays a, a significant part. Um, so all that stuff is very interesting. And, and it sets up a lot of, I think, what's going to play out in future stories as far as uh, you know, Hal not necessarily being the one that most people like. It, he's, he's not a supremely uh, lovable superhero. He, his, his partners get frustrated by him. His teammates, you know, the people he works with, his family. He's a, he's a, he, he can really, uh, you know, nails on a chalkboard for some people. And I, I think that, that makes us like him because I think we can sometimes feel like maybe we irritate people as well. So I think it's nice to see a character that has that kind of a, a, a flaw in, in who he is. So I did enjoy Revenge of the Green Lanterns a lot, but the main reason I enjoyed it is because they do a great stories with two other members of the Justice League. And chief among them is 
this story involving uh, the Green Arrow. Uh, they do a wonderful story in this one doing, uh, I guess you could say, it's really family, but like fathers and sons. And Green Arrow has a sort of a strange relationship with his son. And, and the you know, Hal Jordan is dealing with his relationship with his brother and his his brother's children and it's just uh, it's a it's really really well done and it catches you off guard emotionally and some of the fun twists and I don't want to ruin any of it but it's perfect um, it's it's really just a supremely well done story and then they follow that with the storyline I was destined to enjoy the most probably as a Batman fan they did two issues in this trade with Batman as well. So it was a fun like glimpse into his relationship with the other members of the Justice League. And I won't ruin either of the stories, but the Batman story is fun because of the way that Batman... I can see now what why Ryan feels like Batman's this one-note character in some ways, the same way people might feel Superman's a more one-note character. And Batman definitely is used that way in this. And it's perfect because he balances the story they're trying to tell with Hal so well. Um, so that storyline made me laugh a couple of times and it was just really well put together. And so I would say that one is, is definitely a great one to check out. And then this is the one that, ar that arrived most recently at my house. I found a really cheap version on uh, in, uh, eBay and I picked that up. So I've got those first five trades to really enjoy. Um, this is Wanted Hal Jordan. And it mainly, like, it's got two storylines in it, but the main story has to do with, so I guess, I don't want, I'm probably going to mispronounce the name, but Abin Sur was the Green Lantern who died and gave his ring. His ring then selected Hal Jordan to take it over. So he's he's uh, a big part of the past of, of Hal Jordan. Abin Sur's son wants revenge on Hal for taking the ring. And so this one kind of centers on that in a big way. Um, what I liked most about it was, and I'm not going to ruin it, but uh, John Stewart was a small part of those other four trades. He was not; he didn't play a significant role. And Hal keeps saying over and over again through these trades, "Well, John Stewart's undercover. He's doing something for me. He's 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 on assignment." You get to find out what that assignment is here, and it's a great twist. And, and you really don't see it coming. I, I, at least I didn't. And I like to think I should. I usually spot that kind of stuff. It was well played. Um, so that's the first storyline. The second storyline is a, is not my favorite. Um, I mean, the artwork is really like sultry women and scantily clad, whatever. But uh, it's just... Uh, I think sometimes what frustrates me about the Green Lantern storylines is it's a lot of like... The green versus the yellow versus the pink. It's all, it's all like color-coded. And I know that's a big part of the mythos and you kind of need it. But after a while, I'm like, okay, like, like I get it. She's the pink whatever. And so this one's Star Sapphire and it has to do with uh, these, uh, the, the I guess it's the purple power. But like the idea that they want these women to are trying to procreate and they're trying to control and get the best power sources to then bring that into their system and and so they take over the at different points the two women in Hal Jordan's life his ex-girlfriend and the new girl that he's kind of interested in and it it's really a a, a pretty weak love triangle kind of storyline with Hal and the two girls sort of fighting over him in a way like literally and figuratively I didn't I didn't love that storyline I mean obviously attractive women and scantily clad pink outfits or whatever but I just um I definitely preferred the first story with Jon Stewart and that kind of like twist the story was just well written so those are the first five trades in the in the Jeff Johns Green Lantern run that I read in the order that I did them uh I hope you check some of them out if you haven't your library might carry them or you might find them I found some really cheap ones on eBay so you might be able to get some used ones that are in great condition and you can just really enjoy them I'm thinking of doing this for the Thor Jason Aaron run that I keep talking about. My girls will want to get involved with that one. I'm also going to move on after this. i got to do Blackest Night and the Sinestro Core War. Not in that order. Um, so I will do more of the Green Lanterns and keep you up to date. Hope you enjoyed it. Like, subscribe, comment, and let me know what uh, series you've been reading.